Hello, everybody. My name is Kelly Higgins, and I am with the Autism Community Connection. We are very excited today to have our webinar about Project Lifesaver and safety um, options. Um, we have uh, Will um, Fredericks with us. Unfortunately, Rod Hay Rodney Hayes is unable to do the webinar today because um, they had a tragedy um, within the uh, White River Township Department a week or so ago, I believe. Um, and our thoughts and prayers are with um, the whole department. But we're excited to have Will here. Um, he's going to talk about Project Lifesaver. We also have uh, Kara Fast um, on here. Um, she's the Director of Safety Education and Outreach with the Riley Safety Store. So we're very excited to have both of them here to kind of give us some ideas, learn more about each program, and some safety tips. Hi, Kara. So, um, a little bit about ACC. We are a local nonprofit organization. Um, we uh, serve um, Johnson County uh, residents who are affected by autism and the surrounding counties. Um, we have several programs um, that helps individuals with autism. Um, and we have several upcoming events. Um, we have our trivia night, which is September 25th. We have our Trunk or Treat, which is October 23rd. And then we have our Breakfast with Santa, which is uh, December 4th. So to learn more about what we have going on, just go to our website. And Rodney, uh, sorry, Will, take it away. All right. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm going to generally speak about uh, Project Lifesaver as each host agency is different as to how they implement the program. Uh, but it is a program that was funded in 1999 to help locate cognitive disorder or individuals with cognitive disorders uh, who have a history of elopement. Uh, it could be for adults or children. Uh, it has been used often for dementia patients uh, or individuals with autism or Down syndrome. Uh, currently in central Indiana, there's 26 host agencies uh, that are currently enrolled in Project Lifesaver. Uh, White River is the main, the member agency for Johnson County, um, but they work closely with the other fire departments in the township or in the county. So uh, the application process is set by the local agencies. Uh, so it'll be very important for you to contact Rodney at the White River Township Fire Department for more information and how to actually enroll into the program. Uh, there's needs criteria and such to get into it. Please bear with me here. Um, so after you have met the criteria to enter into the program and the need has been um, established, you would have a, the equipment that the individuals would have would be a transmitter. And this transmitter has a unique frequency uh, for that individual. Uh, and it would be attached to a band that's either on their wrist or on their ankle, whichever they can tolerate the most. Uh, and with its unique frequency, we'll, we'll talk to the receivers that are carried by the, by the agencies that are the first responder agencies that will be uh, helping locate the individual if they elope. Um, you would also receive a battery tester. Uh, and part of the agreement between the caregiver and the host agency is that battery needs to be tested daily. Um, and the host agency is usually um, um, work out a program for changing the batteries uh, and making sure the information is up to date. So, um, so that is the equipment that the the ocu or the participants or the uh, caregivers would have. Um, on the first responder side, uh, we have receivers. And with the receiver, we can dial in the, the unique frequency. And um, that is how we use it for tracking. Uh, it has about a mile range in open areas. Um, and it has tones that get louder and more frequent as we get closer. Um, it is more the, one of the most accurate uh, technology out there for tracking individuals. Um, it's been around for many years um, and it's proven to be more reliable than GPS at this point uh, due to all the environmental uh, uh, environmental effects that are out there. So um, one of the 
advantages of the one of the advantages of having the project lifesaver and having individuals enrolled in that is the amount of people that it takes to do a search. Um, a lot of times individuals with the cognitive disorder are having trouble, uh, you know, being overstimulated. So now if we have a large number of people doing a search, it is, you know, they may tend to run more than anything. With the, uh, with Project Lifesaver and the receiver, you basically need two people, one controlling the receiver and one basically being a guide to make sure that that individual doesn't run into anything and just a second set of eyes. Uh, ideally, you have more than one receiver and you can pinpoint an area, come at it or, you know, work from different directions so that you are able to, um, to get a more precise location. The average time right now uh, from Project Lifesaver is about 30 minutes uh, to locate an individual who is eloped. Uh, the, in, there has been some as quick as three minutes. Uh, Hancock County in Indiana just had one at the beginning of August uh, where it was 15 minutes from the time that it was deployed to the time that the individual was located. Uh, so. Uh, like I said, each, uh, each participating agency sets a criteria as to um, and a needs assessment for the individuals prior to uh, enrolling into the program. And also, a lot of times, the agencies will put a band on the individual with no transmitter to begin to, um, to work on people who are, or, you know, for them to be comfortable with it and to get used to that feeling of having that on there. So uh, that is what I have for uh, a general overview of Project Lifesaver. Uh, if you have any questions for Johnson County, I'll, again, you can contact Rodney at White River Township Fire Department and Kelly will give you the contact information for him. Are there any questions for Will about Project Lifesaver? I mean, we just have some couple people um, come back on, Will. Do you want to kind of go over just a little bit again, just a little bit about it, and I'll throw those pictures up again about what the the bracelets and the transmitter and some of the information. I can put that back on. Uh, yes. Uh, one of the other things, uh, so Project Lifesaver, like I said, it was founded in 1999. Uh, since its inception, they have uh, had over 3,800 participants have been located in a uh, pretty quick amount of time uh, for their success rate. Uh, individuals enrolled in the program will have a band on them uh, with a unique frequency number. And the, the agency doing the search would be able to uh, program in that frequency number and be able to uh, help pinpoint where that individual is at. Uh, one of the nice things about Project Lifesaver is as long as there is an agency, a participating agency, anywhere you go, uh, you will be able to have that, or, and say you go on vacation to, we'll say Florida. Uh, if they're, where you vacation at, if, the, if there's an agency there enrolled in Project Lifesaver, you will be able to contact them, give them the frequency number. They are able to plug that into their program. Um, and then all the information is on a computer-based database and every member of Project Lifesaver is able to, uh, to log into the Project Lifesaver webpage and get the current, most current information for that individual, including uh, their demographics, um, the most recent picture that is put into the program, and also some of their likes and some of their dislikes, some of the things that trigger them so that you are able to develop, or you know, you, you can develop an idea of where they may go or how to, um, how, how to help them uh, come to you by 
talking about some of the likes they have or know some of the things that may trigger them for them to run off even farther. So, um, most agencies have at least more than one receiver. Uh, so we call it a triangulate. So you would go in three different spots and narrow down where your search is at. Um, it allows the agencies not to, um, or it allows for a more controlled search than if we were to put it out there as a missing person. And then you have a lot of people coming and no really sense of organization as to how the search is done. The search is done in a very systematic, very uh, organized way. And uh, that has also helped with the, um, you know, with the amount of time that is taken to locate an individual. Wonderful, thank you. Um, any other questions that anybody has um, about Project Lifesaver? Um, you can unmute or you can go into the chat. Um, just let us know if you have any questions. A quick question. So I'm a parent of uh, two kids on the spectrum. Is there, um, so besides the wristband, are there other devices or type of things that can be used? Uh, for the transmitter part, no, it has to be on the, on the person at all times. And that has been the best way to do it. Um, they have some pretty indestructible bands for individuals who, who fight or who cannot stand having the band on there. Yeah. Okay. How about like, so if for some reason, you know, a family just didn't think that was the best for their child, are there just other helpful tips or tricks that kind of just, especially if you know, you tend to have a child that elopes, are there just any kind of helpful things that you recommend? Do you recommend, you know, parents working with uh, people like your, yourself just to introduce and say, hey, this is my child, just to kind of kind of build that rapport or? Um, there is, uh, on Project Lifesaver on their webpage, they have a couple tips for wandering individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times uh, we're, your local um, fire police dispatch center. Uh, if you call them and let them know, uh, they can put a note on your address to let you know that you have individuals who elope. Uh, so then when, when, you know, if they do elope and you need, um, need help for searching, they would be able to, you know, the notes would already be in there, even though know some of the demographics of who we're looking for. And then um, is there any, I guess I'm just wondering if there's just a way more or less to try and build a relationship with your child and law enforcement and or, you know, uh, fire departments. I just wonder, you know, cause that's the other thing is that the child's just scared. Either for one, fascinated to death with, you know, having uniforms and thinking they're awesome or the other uh, just scared to death and doesn't, you know, won't communicate with someone in that kind of well, field. Project Lifesaver on, not on the, um, they also have an in-home or like a perimeter alarm that would, it's not connected to any of the police fire or anything. It would, it would be alerting you if they went, uh, I think you can set it for two or 300 feet away from, from the base. So if they went farther than that, it would beep on you. It would alert you that they're, they're out of the perimeter. And I can speak to some other of the safety recommendations and things that we have for programs at Riley for children with developmental disabilities and autism as well. And I would also like to mention, you know, the bracelets doesn't have to be like just on their wrists. It can be on their ankles as well. Um, some have that. Um, that option as well. Um, any other questions um, about Project Lifesaver? All right, thank you, Will, so much um, for all this information. Um, I will definitely, um, when I send out the email to everybody with the recording, I will um, send out all of the websites, um, links, 
um, and on the uh, um, White River um, Fire Department page also has the documents that you need to fill out to apply for the program here in Johnson County as well. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. All right, Kara. Well, good evening. My name is Kara Fast, um, and I um, am the Director of Safety Education Outreach, but also the safety store at Riley Hospital for Children. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen a little bit so you can kind of see. Um, I put together a short presentation. Maybe. Sorry, I'm having a bit of trouble. I'll get through it quickly, hopefully. Can you guys see the PowerPoint? Yes, I can. Okay, let me go back. All right. So we are located um, in Riley, in the Riley Outpatient Center. Um, and we're open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. And I realize that that's not in the evenings or weekends, but the place we're at limits that. But we do offer um, curbside pickup for members of the community right now. If you don't have an appointment at Riley right now to come into the hospital for any other reason, um, you, it's closed because of COVID. But if you're in for another appointment, you can visit us between the hours of nine and four. Um, as you can see, we have um, it made to look like the inside of a house. And we have lots of different um, areas in there. And we have a special needs area as well. Um, so basically, we have staff that have worked both inpatient and have children with special needs. And so we're able to assess um, pretty quickly and talk with parents about the best ways to keep their child safe. Um, this is, we also have virtual appointments available. If you just want to talk through some information, um, we can do that as well. Um, so basically, we're kind of a one-stop shop um, where we can provide you with a lot of information. And I'm going to pull up our website really quick so you can see that. So we're the safety store. Um, a couple of, there's a shop section. And just to pull up our autism safety kit that we have, so you guys can see it. Um, I don't know if you can see it okay or not. But so we basically have um, a kit with door, window alarms, shoe IDs, stop signs, um, a lots of education and information in a, in a wondering emergency plan. And it shows you how to set that wondering emergency plan up and gives you kind of the, um, the whole, you know, it's, it's for teachers and you and caregivers has a lot of information. Um, there's a video on it as well that explains it. If you click, I can click on that video real quick if you guys can hear it, but. Children with autism, they wander and lack the ability to communicate. Autism safety tools can be used to help them Well, that's not going to play for us for some reason the rest of the way, um, but I encourage you to go. Uh, there's also a kit for developmental disability. If you don't have a specific diagnosis of autism, we also have a blue kit um, for that as well. And that is, sorry, I hope I'm not going too fast for everybody. There's the developmental disability kit right here. It has similar things in it as well, um, but we'll kind of go over some of those other things. I'm kind of jumping around a bit, but I just want you guys to kind of get a sense of who we are. 
Um, so what we teach people um, about wandering elopement. So basically, if a person is a wanderer or runner, let your likable fire department and police department know, which we already talked about that with enhanced 911. That's really important. And you want to make sure you tell them about all bodies of water close to your home. And you want to um, look around your neighborhood, your subdivision. Some of those can have hidden retention ponds and different bodies of water, you know, pools, things around your neighborhood that you want to pay attention to. Because um, as we know, um, a lot of children and adults with autism actually are gravitated towards water um, and many of them cannot swim. Um, we also talk about alerting people at the person's school, camp, and other settings for their potential for wandering and provide them with information on what to do if they are missing. So there is a, we'll go back to that and I'll show you that paperwork. Um, when outside, be alert to signals that the person is trying to move away from you, such as pointing at something or turning to watch or look at something. Be alert when the person is placed in a new environment, such as a you know, new home visits or a new classroom. Um, and be sure the person has identification on them in case they wander or separated. And if you can have Project Lifesaver, obviously that's the gold standard to be able to have that. But um, if it's not in your area and you want some other tips on how to keep them safe, we can provide that. Um, we talk about wandering and elopement. Um, you're going to call 911 immediately if the person's missing. Let them notice that they were missing and what they were wearing. Talk about the water and where those are at. Make sure you keep a recent picture and update information, including height, weight, and other identifying features in an easily accessible location and let people know how to best approach and communicate with them. And I'm gonna pull up on our website. You can um, actually go to our, if you click on education resources, that's gonna give you a lot of different, a lot of the different resources we have. And I'm gonna go ahead down and click on the autism safety toolkit so you can see what's in it. This is just the paperwork. And it's still loading, sorry. So as you can see, it gives you um, examples of wandering um, and what is all in the kit. We have some resources on here from the National Autism Association and um, from our safety store. It tells you everything that's in the kits. It's an autism bracelet, mini window alarms, shoe ID kit, lost and found, tattoos, um, important information for caregivers, which is a magnet that attaches to your refrigerator or your bulletin board. So if they're for some reason watching them, and um, for you and you need to put all your information, it's there. We have two clean signs that say emergency alert may not respond to commands. And we also have stop signs so that you can teach your um, children um, visual cues about stopping. And those you can place on doors and windows and different things like that as well. So you'll see, I'm not gonna read all this to you. Um, but we can go on and we can share the links. This is a wandering safety checklist that talks about putting alarms on doors. And we actually do carry um, a, an alarm that's $5.75. Um, and we also suggest if you can to get um, your, if you have a home security alarm, you can set it up to tell you which door or window someone has gone out of. Um, but if cost is an issue, you can definitely get the alarms that stick with adhesive and put them on different areas around your house. They have a high decibel to alert um, what's going on. Can you guys see the Wandering Emergency Plan? Or are you seeing my slide? No, we're seeing the plan. Okay, good. Um, then we have... Um, what to do if your child is missing. Um, and it tells you, you know, just kind of gives you an idea of what you should do there. Um, alert for missing child with information. And again, we have this for developmental disability as well, um, but it's gonna give you all of the things that you need to keep 
um, track of and communication, best way to approach child. Um, so you can fill that out and provide that to the responders. And also there's a teacher caregiver letter that talks to, it walks you through. Um, so if you have a child with autism or developmental disability that's in school, um, most likely they have an IEP. And in an IEP, you um, should create, write a safety plan into that, meaning the school should have a safety plan in place for the child, especially if they wander. So if they, if you don't currently have that in place, um, we ask, you know, it'd be a good idea to talk to the special education department and when they're having an IEP meeting and they need to specifically write um, the safety plan into that IEP, meaning they're, what steps are they going to follow if your child should go missing and, you know, what are, what's going to be the reactions and how they're going to take care of that. That goes anywhere from um, contacting police and fire, but also making sure that, you know, they're getting a hold of you and letting you know what's happening. Um, we have a resources pages to um, Indiana resources. We also talk about swimming lessons. We know that's really important. Um, if you have a child that, you know, you can teach to swim, um, that there are, this is someplace where you can find swimming lessons. Um, so you see right on here, and this has been on here for years, but Project Lifesaver pops up as one of the big tracking devices. Um, we've tried other things in the safety store to have, and quite honestly, we have not found um, a provider that does a great job. Um, there is the Project Lifesaver. Obviously, that's the gold standard. There's another one called If I Need Help, and basically that has a unique QR code um, where you can, let me pull that up so you guys can see it. Um, so basically this was um, a, a family out of California that has a son with autism and they have a lot of different products and you can see the QR code here and the scan to go. And actually the information that you put in there is, um, can be geared towards anything you want it to say. So if someone finds them and they have a patch or um, a t-shirt or um, there's a clip, there's many different things that you can put on besides bracelets. What you could do is you put that information uh, uploaded into that app. And if somebody scans that or puts that information in, they'll have um, all, you can see it is on a shirt there. They will have all access to all the information that you have provided on that um, if they're found wandering. And so, I mean, that it's kind of a low tech way, but if somebody, if they're out and about and they see them, it's not going to, it's not going to track them down, but if somebody finds them and they have that on, they can um, get into that QR code or enter that number and find that information to be hopefully be able in touch with you. So it, it shows you, you know, if you found someone, what to do and um, kind of the success stories. So um, if you guys want to take a look at that at any time, that's a good one too. And you can order different products um, right off their site. Um, they have some safety kits. They, the ones that are good that we've had before are the key, sh the shoe tags. Those are really good for kids who are nonverbal and um, kids who have, you know, an aversion to touch. Um, so there are just a lots of different things on here that you guys can um, check out. Do you guys have any questions about that? Okay. So again, this is just a few of our things we've talked about, but we have, we have the autism silicone bracelets and we have um, a lots of diagnosis for um, different bracelets that we have, different kinds of bracelets that we have um, and our key tags um, and the whole kit. The kit is $25 and you can purchase all of the things individually um, except for like the education, of course, and the stop signs. But if you need some of those, just let us know. Um, we also have a lot of, whoops. 
We also have a lot of, um, let me get back into our website here. Education resources. So we have, uh, just to go through real quickly, we have a safety store information card, which tells what we are, who we are. We have a family safety series that focuses on, if you hit the download, it focuses on different topics, um, bike safety. Um, one we just completed is the special needs safety series. If you download that, um, you can see that we have many different types of information and we have one that's specifically, um, that's gonna open up here for wandering and elopement safety. So that's gonna give you a little bit of a checklist, which is kind of a condensed version of what's um, in the kit. Um, but it's something quick that you can look at and it's something that you can give um, the information to teachers or to family so they can get a better understanding of what you can do for your child or adult actually as well. Um, we also have um, kids coloring sheets. Um, in addition, we have the special needs Special children need special care, and it's actually a booklet. Um, and we can send some of those, but you can, it's printer heavy, but we can open it up and I can show you that real quick. Sorry, it's just taking a minute to load for whatever reason. It's a big file. So um, we have different sections of this um, talking about care in the hospital, safety and healthcare providers, um, how to prepare for kids going home, um, how to plan for kids' safety at home, how to keep them safe when they travel. So there's some different topics in there. Help me, and if there is an emergency, how do you teach um, a child with autism and or in a developmental disability about you know, not hiding um, from the police officers? And I think that's probably what you were alluding to earlier is how do you develop a relationship so that they know your child and then your child knows them? Um, I don't know, and maybe you can, answer this, William, is do they have any programs where they have, will let the kids come in and see the fire trucks and talk to the policemen if they're open to that? I know with, with my fire department, um, our door is usually always open. Um, we've actually, we've uh, loosened up with all the COVID. Uh, we were shut down for a while, but uh, there, we have an annual open house at our department, and I believe Greenwood all, does also. So, I mean, that, yeah, that's certainly a time that you, you know, if you if you feel like your child could benefit from that, you could either call and set up an appointment with them or just um, go to an open house and walk through, or you might talk to them about, you know, even letting kids try on, you know, equipment sometimes or just kind of doing more play role play with them can be helpful if you have a child that you think would respond to that. Um, and I think all you have to do is reach out for the most part. I know firemen and, you know, policemen are more than willing to do anything they can to help with that. Um, the other form that we have is called um, an emergency information form which is kind of like what was in um, the kit, but it actually goes into all the medical conditions. So if you would want to have this, you can download this from us. You can fill it out and provide it for, keep it for when um, you, if you do have someone go missing, but also just keeping it for everything that they've, all the physical things that they have, 
diagnoses, um, procedures. It's kind of like a health record, um, but that is a nice thing to have. You can, you should be able to type in it or print it and then, you know, keep it on hand. So if you need that as well, that's there. And we leave these, obviously these are up all the time. So you can download them whenever you want to um, or share them. I know with, with our department, we've had several groups come in or individuals. Um, they say we're always more than willing to have people come in. So, and I would think that would be the same for any of the other fire departments around. Yeah, I would assume, I mean, I would assume so. They all have been wonderful. Um, so we've talked about that. So just some more of our, here's a key to a safe home, um, which is on the website as well. It talks about the five most common childhood injuries. It's a good packet. We also talk about family emergency planning and that goes in depth. It's a booklet that you can order or download on our site that goes into what are all the things that you need to have in case there's an emergency, um, a fire, tornado, whatever. Um, it's going to walk you through how to put that emergency kit together. And it might be appropriate then to also put all the information about your child into that kit as well um, and have, you know, an extra copy of it. So if you do have to maybe keep it in a car or wherever you can get to it when you're um, evacuating, if you have to evacuate quickly. And then, of course, we have the special needs safety series that I just talked to you about and the booklet right there. The other thing that we have, and we encourage you to do this because the people that we have on staff actually do these assessments with families. And so we actually have started a safety store helpline, which anybody can call and talk about anything, but we do have people on staff that can talk you through things that would be um, good for your child and how we can help. And we can provide some other resources um, as well, we have a database that we've built of all kinds of resources for parents. So whatever phone calls we get, we have resources that we can send to them and we can talk you through it. And also, like I said before, we can set up a virtual appointment where we can basically sit down and talk to you about what your concerns are. And we could give you information um, on ways to help or alternatives. We also discuss Project Lifesaver pretty heavily. So we have the brochure and give it out when people talk about wandering and elopement being a concern for them. Um, we show them how to walk through um, the website and then how to find out if it's in their area or not. I know that not all um, areas have it, um, but we work with people on that as well. Um, we also have our social media handles um, that we distribute information on two to three times a week and they're different topics. Um, some of them are quick reminders, some of them, um, and it's a range of safety topics. So if you're, you like to use social media and want some extra information, you can see that on there as well. And I'm gonna go um, back to the first part of the slide and pull the website up again so I can show you one more thing. Okay, so of course there's the shop feature. Some of the products that we have on here don't have prices listed and there's a good reason for that. We sell everything at cost. So some of the products we sell like our sleep sacks and our Dr. Brown products and things like that, we can't advertise the pricing because most of our pricing is about half of what it can be sold for at special pricing. So for example, let's just pick one that doesn't have a price, um, a car seat. So due to special pricing, that car seat's $48, which would be about double if you bought it somewhere else. Um, so if you don't see something, a price on there, it's because we cannot put the lower prices and advertise them, but we can still sell them to you. Um, you would just need to call us for the pricing 
and we would send you actually an invoice that you pay by credit card. Um, and that's just because we want to keep the pricing down. We would rather you pay $9.95 for a sleep sack than $20. Um, but we can't put that online because that's a, then we're competing um, with, with you know, a, a company that's trying to sell online. The other thing is we only sell to people in Indiana. So, and we limit the number of things that people can buy so that they're not buying and reselling. So you'll see limits of what you can purchase. It's usually five. Um, and so that's in effect as well. But just know if you don't see a price of something on there, all you got to do is call us and let us, you know, we can tell you the price and you can decide whether you want it or not. We also ship um, and it's a price-based shipping. So when you get to the end, it's, it's not by weight or anything. That's the best way we can figure out to do it. Um, and I think it's seven dollars for the first tier, and it and I think it maxes out at fourteen, and that's if you have a huge order. Um, we've seen an uptick of people using the website, um, of course, during COVID, um, and so we've tried to put every single thing on there that we have in the store. Um, there may be a few things that you don't see. If you want a diagnosis keychain. Um, you'll just need to click on there and you choose which one you want and you choose your option and you can purchase it that way. Um, so there's, those are all in the same line there. And then all the bracelets are all in there individually, the autism bracelets. So I won't keep moving fast, but I encourage you to check this website out and also all of our education resources and if you're at Riley for an appointment and you want to come in and see us or you want to set up a virtual appointment, we're more than willing to walk you through different things and strategies that we have. We also have, um, and, and people's opinions vary about these, but we also have the larger harnesses for kids who tend to run and bolt. And um, so we can fit those harnesses there, specially made um, by somebody from Etsy that we have gotten them cheaper from her and we sell them through the store. So we could give you information. I don't have those on our website because she sells them on her website through Etsy. Um, but we can certainly talk to you about them and, um, ship you one. We can talk to you about the sizing. It's based on chest size and things like that as well. Um, we also talk about, we show you how to do the window and door alarms, um, where to put them, how to make them effective. Um, we just walk through a bunch of different things. If you have um, needs other than just wandering an elopement, we also have all the home safety needs that we can discuss with you as well. So does anybody have any questions for me? I know that's a lot of information and I know I've been clicking through a lot. So I just encourage you to look at our website and call us if you need anything or you need us, but definitely for sure. The big thing is if you can contact your fire department and your police department and have a conversation with them, at least that might help your comfort level. And, you know, with the enhanced 911, they can tag that in your system, in, in the system. So I think it's very valuable to, to contact them in advance if you can. And you may have, I don't know, William, do they have some, are there any areas in Indiana that don't have the enhanced 911 still that you know of? Uh, that do not have it? Yeah. Um, I am not sure. I know I work in Hancock County and we have the SPART 911 program. And um, actually in all of our apparatus, we have computers uh, that give us that information. So anytime we are dispatched for a run with a special circumstance, we already have it on our computer. and We know what we're coming into. Um, but I think, I don't think every county in Indiana has it yet. Um, I think most of your major metropolitan ones will. Some of the outlying very rural counties will probably not. And I failed to mention too, that we have um, if you have, you want to talk to your child about safety, we also have, um, like, for example, you know, um, school bus safety, um, different topics like that that come with coloring sheets. So they're a little bit more kid friendly and you can talk to them about the bus and 
um, different things. So, you know, obviously these are for anybody, but it's a good visual tool um, for kids of, you know, that, that can benefit from all of this information. We try to be very um, family centered and kid friendly with our information. And I hope that you'll be able to find what you need. And if not, call me or email me, email us. We have an email, it's, it's on the webpage, safestore at iu.edu too. So we're, we're reachable by almost every mode out there. Um, you can also private message us on our Facebook, um, Instagram pages as well. I think that's all I had, unless there are questions. Um, hi, this is Katie, um, and I apologize, I came in a little late, so I might have missed this, but um, have, has anyone been able to use um, like waiver dollars um, to pay for any of these products, or do you offer any kind of financial assistance if needed? So we saw all of our stuff at cost. Um, and sometimes we will have a social, social work can purchase them if they're Riley patients, but we don't have any programs outside in the community. But if you're seen at Riley and you need assistance, social work can often help. Um, I don't know about the waivers. I don't know a lot about those. We, we don't, obviously, we don't accept any of those. Um, we're not set up for that. Um, but we we could help you probably find somebody in the community that might be able to assist you. Or if you are a patient at Riley, we can um, get social work involved to assist because they do that, this kind of stuff all the time. So not a great answer to that question, but we can usually help figure something out um, if needed. I, I always, you know, be the one that leans towards helping people out if they can't afford it, so. Um, any other questions for me about that? Has that information, is that information helpful or do you want any, I mean, are you curious about any of the products or has anybody ever been to the safety store? Yeah, I've been to the safety, safety store and I've actually, I purchased the two, the window alarms and uh, that has helped us. I love that. The kids are scared to death of that noise. So it is um, great for that. I just wish, um, and I mean, I know there's it's another safety side of it. I just wish um, they tend to like, if they're upset in the car, you know, I know there's door safety locks and things like that. And we've worked with an OT of getting a specialized uh, car seat. Um, to keep them more in the car. Cause a lot of times, you know, if you're going somewhere where they don't want to go or you're in that transition where you're trying to get them from a very preferred place back to home, uh, that's where we kind of see behaviors. And so, you know, <laughs> I understand why you can't, you know, uh, <laughs> lock your, I mean, not necessarily lock your kid in the car, but, you know, have a more, um, a safe, you know, thing in spot, or, you know, something in place that, will truly secure them and where they should be, um, especially in a car. Because I know there are situations where if there was an accident, you do want to get them out of there safely. I just wish there was, <laughs> I want something else. <laughs> and I don't know what that is, but um, um, I understand you, why there's that. Did they, when they did the evaluation, did they talk about the five-point harness? Yeah, they, and we did that. And But unfortunately, like it still has the master safety belt, and that's what they can okay loop around and they can grab so okay. it worked for a while until they were big and big enough to figure that out and then once they did that you know then I'm like okay now now what and they're like right oh, really because again I understand have, it <laughs> have you been back in touch with um auto safety the special needs center for auto safety uh, did you work with Tony or uh, someone okay. else there. Yeah, I think it was Tony and then he left, right? He's not there anymore. Or, oh, Jason was, left. Tony's Jason. there now. Okay. So it was with Jason first. And then I worked with a, uh, a female afterwards. And basically she's like, well, he, they're Houdini's. If they can get out of it, they talked about the manufacturer that makes it and says, well, you've got the best product. So if they can get past that, unfortunately, there's not too much. 
So again, I totally understand why, but <laughs> I just wish there was something else. Yeah, I'm, yeah, we always defer to them for yeah. that. All of our, that's one thing I forgot to mention too. Everybody in our store is a certified child passenger safety technician. So we have, they have, and at least three of my people have been trained in the special needs. So we can discuss that. But as far as actually putting it in place, that has to come through them. And if, the, unfortunately, if they're not giving you good suggestions, I don't know what else. That's, that's frustrating. Yeah. How old is the child? Um, so it's happened to both. One is getting ready to turn seven and the other one is uh, nine and a half. Yeah. So yeah, that's difficult because they want to be in booster seats probably too. And yeah. they're trying to escape and yeah, they won't let us recommend any kind of seatbelt lock or anything right. like that. Yeah. Um, but if you want to, um, send me or provide me with more information, let me, I can look into it a little bit more just because they don't have a solution doesn't mean we can't look into something. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like I've worked with behavioral consultants and things like that. I think it's better, but I just, I fear of when those tactics don't work. I want a backup plan and that's what, <laughs> that's what I can't have. So. Megan, I want to let you know, I have two daughters with autism and my youngest um, is 11. Okay. And we still struggle with this as well in the vehicle. Uh, yes. Sometimes we can let her sit up front because she's old enough and big enough. But um, for a whole year, I had to put her back in the back because she would start pressing buttons. And then she would try to start opening the door while driving. Yes. So, yeah. um, so we have her still in the back. Um, she will wear her seatbelt, thankfully. But we still use the child safety locks. Yep. Um, for her in the back. Um, another thing I'm starting to consider, uh, since she does have devices, um, yesterday, um, as we were driving home, um, I was telling her to turn down her cell phone because it's very loud um, when she's listening to the same thing over and over again, and she almost threw it at me. Yeah. Um, so that could have been a huge safety issue, and I actually found online um, some safety nets that can go on the back of the car for the front two seats yeah. that I'm kind of thinking about um, just in case she does chuck something at me while I'm driving because that if I if it hits me just right in the head I mm -hmm. could cause an accident as well yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I've had that and then if I have my hair in a ponytail you know they can pull on that yes just, yeah yeah, so I just wanted to know, I completely understand and feel you <laughs> all the way. <laughs> yeah, if, if anything, it's just we pull over and you got to wait them out. So. Yeah, and that too, we've done that before, just waiting <laughs> out yeah. until she calms down enough to move on safely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Megan, if you want to talk about it more, you can call the safety helpline and ask for me and they can transfer me to you or I can call you back. <laughs> And I can walk you through some other stuff. So you have you you had you've been to the safety store then and got the, yeah. the window alarms and yep. everything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like it comes in spurts. And so of course, you know, when it first happens, it's when you're caught off guard and that's when it just catches you. But then right. once you kind of ride ride the wave of how often they're gonna elope or have a behavior like that, then you're kind of more prepared. But so do they have, are they in school as well? Do they have difficulty yeah. in school? Yep. So my oldest one, he does awesome in school. Um, no issues really there. My youngest one, um, <laughs> we're on their second school so far this year. So, um, but yeah, I feel like he's in a safe environment now. Finally, a playground that has a fence. <laughs> Those help. Um, so, yeah. Do they have a safety plan written into his IEP? So it's not specifically written in, but I mean, it's basically like a building plan. So, you know, everybody has walkie talkies, there's cameras everywhere. And okay. yeah, there's, I feel like they, in this. They, they cover out, it pretty well. Yep. I feel like it's covered. Thank you. Well, that's really great conversation going on. Um, Kara, thank you so much for all your input in the, about the safety. Will, thank you so much for your input about Project Lifesaver. Um, we really appreciate um, everything you've done for us tonight. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.